Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining us. I'm Fred Kemp, President and CEO of the Atlantic Council. I'm delighted uh, to welcome two of the Atlantic Council's favorite global leaders, uh, U.S. Secretary of Commerce Gina Raimondo and American uh, and Euro European Commission. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I have no problem with that. <laughs> uh, don't, don't, be careful what you ask for. Uh, uh, European Commission Executive Vice President Margrethe Vestager. Uh, so, uh, Madam Secretary, Madam Commissioner, welcome to the Council. Um, uh, you've been here before. Uh, you've just come from the fifth meeting of the US EU Trade and Technology Council where you both serve as co-chairs, uh, and we look forward to hearing your insights on that. Since the TTC first met in 2021, it's been a key element in the renewed and revitalized US-EU relationship, critical tool for cooperation together and uh, at a time when we're uh, facing a, a set of daunting challenges together. Um, addressing these issues is what the Atlantic Council has been committed to long before the TTC was the TTC. Uh, the deepening economic relationship between the U.S. and Europe was a core part of our founding mission since we were created in 1961. Our Europe Center, run by Jörn Fleck, leads our engagement uh, for this set of talks uh, through our TTC Track 2 Dialogue Series. Our Geoeconomic Center leads the charge on cutting-edge work on friendshoring semiconductor supply chains. Our Digital Forensic, uh, Forensic Research Lab has 40 staff, 17 countries, cutting-edge research on online ecosystems, our global China is working on China. So across the Atlantic Council, working on our 16 programs and centers ranging from global energy to Africa, we basically drive transatlantic cooperation and relations across all of these realms. And so this is a very special uh, meeting for us. But let me get straight into the questions uh, and start with uh, 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 just a reminder to our virtual audience. We always have a large virtual audience, and you see here we've got standing room only here, uh, that um, they should use the hashtag AC front page uh, on social media and online. Uh, but, but let's get started talking about TTC. So Madam Secretary, Madam Commissioner, this was the fifth TTC ministerial. It's been eight months since you met. A lot happened in that period of time in artificial intelligence, in uh, EVs, in semiconductors. Uh, so talk to us first quickly about what issues and developments were at the top of each of your agendas for this edition, and how was the tone, how, was the, um, how were the issues different than in, in, in previous? And maybe, Madam Commissioner, visiting from Brussels, maybe you could go first. Well. First and foremost, thank you very much for, uh, for hosting us. Uh, congratulations on, on all you do. I think it's, uh, it's really important. And, and the long history of the Atlantic Council, I think, also shows why it's really, really worth investing in this relationship, uh, as we have been doing now uh, for the, the last uh, three years. And um, we've learned a lot uh, in these three years. Uh, and what we're pushing for is, of course, to show that cooperation is useful. It must be felt to make a, a difference uh, for, for people, for businesses, for our stakeholders. So uh, as you say, we have been discussing uh, semiconductors. Uh, we had, I think, a very intense uh, roundtable this morning, uh, Gina, Thierry Breton, and myself, uh, to sort of figure out, well, what is it with the mature notes? Uh, they will be important for decades still to come how to make sure that we cooperate and prevent shortages or being captured by, by Chinese production uh, on those things. And I think it's a very good illustration of how we try to make um, economic security a real thing. Uh, we also discussed uh, one of the things that are very close to heart, which is artificial intelligence. It was one of the first things on our common agenda uh, to, to agree on having a risk-based approach so not to regulate technology, but to focus on the risk, on the use cases where risks are involved. And I think what we have done uh, with pushing for the G7 code of conduct, the executive order that we have here in the US, and the European AI Act that will come into force in two years' time, we have a very much aligned approach. Uh, that will serve the business community, but maybe even more important, 
it will serve us as citizens because the aim is to make artificial intelligence secure, trustworthy, and make sure that it serves people. Uh, and I think those sort of very tangible uh, achievements is, is what has characterized um, uh, the corporation. And, and this is mm. also why I think if you were a fly on the wall, you'd see that there is also a very safe and, and trustworthy atmosphere in the room uh, when we meet, uh, with that also very uh, noticeable feeling that we really want to serve people. Madam Secretary. Uh, well, first, thank you, Fred. Thank you for having us. And thank you to the Atlantic Council for hosting us and for all that you do. Uh, I, I agree uh, with everything uh, that the EVP just said. I think it's useful, though, to remember where we were when we started this. Mm. Right? President Biden came into office. Tensions, US EU tensions were high. Not a lot of uh, collaboration in the five years that preceded us coming into office. And uh, we said we need to really lean into our long standing allies, the Europeans. And so we created this Trade Technology Council to, frankly, get back together. Uh, we have a $1.5 trillion trade relationship. We argue, of course, over certain things as it relates to technology and trade. There are irritants, for sure. But fundamentally, what binds us is massively more consequential than the irritants. Mm -hmm. And so the TTC was created. Uh, we had our first meeting in, in you know, six months after the president took office. Uh, it was a real statement, I think, mm -hmm. that we said we're going to prioritize this. We're going to find concrete areas where we can work together as it relates to technology, trade, emerging technologies, and we have done that. I mean, due to the trust that we've created, the collaboration, the information sharing, we resolved the steel and aluminum tariffs that had existed at the time we came into office, USEU 232 steel and aluminum tariffs. We worked with unbelievable speed to put the export control regime in place. Mm. We brought 36 countries together when war broke out in Russia to deny Russia uh, a lot of technology that they need to conduct the war. Uh, we are now working now, as Magretha said, on semiconductors. We're working together in the way we're implementing our CHIPS acts. You know, I have $50 billion of US taxpayer money to invest. The EU is putting a great deal of money to work. We can't, we have to work with each other. We shouldn't compete against each other. It shouldn't be a race to the bottom. We can't allow companies to play us off of one another and get us into a subsidy race. So I've been to Spain and Italy and other member states and Brussels and we say, how do we work together? Uh, we took electric vehicles, you know, there's no surprise. China is coming on incredibly strongly with respect to electric vehicles, creates market distortion issues as well as data security issues similar our interests are aligned so and AI you know I won't be repetitive to what was said but I feel we've done quite a lot tangible results in a short period of time breathed a new we've in, reinvigorated the US EU relationship mm -hmm. I think in a very concrete way and as we move forward, AI, EVs, semiconductors, AVs, there's so much more work to be done. And as Gina yep. said today, we have a forum where we can complain about each other in a constructive manner. True. So I would like you to do, I'd like you to do that in front of the audience right now. <laughs> uh, so where do you see your most uh, pronounced areas of, uh, of differences that need some working out? And maybe on the flip side of that today, where did you feel you came together? Uh, is there any news in that respect that you could share with us? Can I, I'll, I'll, I'll answer that uh, in the following way. I think we don't disagree as it relates to the principles and the goals. The disagreements are, you know, we have two, we have differences in our systems of government. We have you know, political realities. Mm -hmm. So for instance, one of the first things I did when I got this job was come to some resolution around the privacy shield. And I think, you know, I credit the TTC with that. US and Europe fully agree 
We want trusted data flows, data privacy protection, et cetera. We have different systems of government. We should but don't yet have a data privacy law federally, so we work through it. The same is true um, with uh, sustainability. Uh, you know, we're working on a global steel arrangement. We need to prioritize our trading partners mm -hmm. that have green steel, green aluminum, sustainable, you know, sources of energy. We don't have a carbon border adjustment. We have a different, you know, different way of getting to that. But the goal and the values are the same. Uh, cybersecurity. We have the same interest. You know, we have mm -hmm. we share a democracy. We share a commitment to. Uh, protecting individual rights and people's data and having data security. We share a desire to protect our data from autocratic regimes. We go about it in different ways. So I think the irritants develop in the details, and we have to work through the details. Mm -hmm. so today I talked about the cyber certification scheme. We'll figure out the differences in the implementation, but frankly it's fantastic to have a partner who shares our, you know, values, way of government, and 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 principles? Madam Executive Vice President, Madam Commissioner, what did you? No, I'd I'd add to that because I I fully share uh, that this is the approach that that makes us come together, and the second thing that should not be underestimated is that one thing is that we meet as principles, but before that, while we meet, after that, the teams are coming together which means that literally hundreds of people have gotten to know each other really well. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, during uh, their work for the Russian sanctions, it, you know, it went so fast uh, with very little uh, sort of uh, bumps on the road because people knew each other. And I think it's really important not to underestimate what it means that you know who to call. Uh, and then we've had you know, continuing discussions. Uh, one of them would be on uh, Open RAM. So uh, we had the same uh, ambition uh, to make sure that our networks, they were safe, that we didn't have untrusted vendors uh, in those. Uh, we had a different approach as to how to achieve that uh, when it comes to untrusted vendors. And as a follow-on debate, we have had the debate about Open RAN. Is that sufficiently secure? What is the energy use of Open RAN compared to other uh, solutions? Getting to, I think, a, a balanced view that you need to keep developing uh, open RAN and you need to be uh, neutral in your approach mm. so that those we work with, they may have a preference, but we shouldn't push a, a preference. And I think it's a good example of an approach that comes out of a discussion uh, that was not uh, trivial uh, initially. I think we will see. I think the TTC will prove to be exceedingly valuable now and in the months and years to come as it relates to artificial intelligence, mm. right? We nice. have spent yep. the past two and a half years developing yeah. the TTC, developing the relationships, as you said, having our teams uh, with stakeholders. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot more stakeholder engagement across the border. Today we had a fantastic meeting with semiconductor companies, half European, half American, you know, talking. So now we've built up this trust. Enter AI, enter generative AI, where we have to now write the rules of the road yeah. together. Uh, and we've had an extensive discussion today about standards. How do we together develop standards that will govern AI and the development and use of AI, uh, which is all new. It's all new, and so now we have this muscle that we've built up. Uh, you know, as Margaret says, we have the G7 Code of Conduct, we have the AI Safety yeah. Institute, you have the AI Office. It's all so new. TTC will play a key role in bringing us together to write the rules of the road of AI. Could you drill down on that? You have the executive order, U.S. executive order. You have the EU AI Act. Uh, uh, the technology's moving ahead faster than I would say the regulatory world is. I'm not sure that's entirely a bad thing. But who does write the world? Where, where will the standards be made? Who does write the world rules? You say TTC will do this together, but how will that be then rolled out? How are you balancing the need to mitigate risks uh, but not stifle the incredible innovation that's going on? 
Well, uh, first, for, for me, a very, very fundamental point, which is I think that, uh, that governments, uh, legislative bodies are legitimate in, in dealing with uh, technology. Mm -hmm. So this idea that we will always be behind and technology will just have to lead the way, I think that is just plain wrong. Mm -hmm. Because we have a responsibility to make sure that technology also respects uh, the fundamentals of our society. Uh, and this is what is expressed, I think, the, in the uh, executive uh, order by the president. This is what is expressed in the G7 code of conduct. This is what is expressed in, in the AI Act in, in Europe. That there are some fundamentals where we have full legitimacy in saying, this is how we want things done. Where we can help industry and make sure that the market is as big as possible is, as Gina said, to develop standards. So what does watermarking look like? We all want watermarking so that we know what is fake and what is real. Uh, what is red teaming? Well, how, uh, how deep should that go to be real that you can sort of tick the box? I have done red teaming so that I know my AI is safe. And, um, and one of the things we started on very early was to say, listen, we need to be much more present in standardization for us because they are being more and more dominated by uh, non-market players or Chinese players for that matter, and we need to have a presence. We need to coordinate, we need to be much more strategic. So in all the different forests where these things are being dealt with, we need to have a presence and we need to coordinate. And here the TTC setup comes in extremely handy. But is that then a transatlantic approach, joint regulatory, but what comes out of this? For AI? I think, yeah, absolutely. It's a transatlantic approach. Whether it's joint regulation, I don't know if that's uh, yeah. feasible, obviously. Yeah. But look, I, it will be some time before the US Congress passes a law that relates to the governing of mm. AI. Uh, I'm just going to stipulate that, and I'm sure everybody's <laughs> going to agree with me. <laughs> it, um, so between now and whenever that is, and we need that. To be, to be clear, we need that, right? To have a regulatory <coughs> structure with enforcement mechanisms mm -hmm. and penalties, we need a statute to do that. Mm -hmm. And we will get there. In the absence of that, there's an awful lot of work to be done. For example, with standards. Right now, right now, one thing I do hope Congress does is there is a bipartisan agreement to invest $10 million in the AI Safety Institute, which we are standing up at the Department of Commerce, a tiny amount of money to focus on these standards, exactly what you said. You know, what is adequate watermarking? What is safe? You know, what, it, what does it mean to say uh, you, the red teaming is adequate? What does it mean to say um, certain guidelines around what testing equals safety? So uh, that's what we are going to be thinking about uh, at the AI Safety Institute. I do hope Congress funds that. But all of those standards and all of this, of course, happens in not just uh, bilateral standard setting bodies, but global standard setting bodies. I promise you, if the US mm -hmm. and the EU don't show up, China will, mm -hmm. autocracies will. And we've, we've had our lunch eaten over the years in, like, in the ITU, that's a standard-setting body for mm -hmm. the internet. Uh, you talked about ORAN, telecommunications. I, this is, I know, really boring-sounding stuff, but it matters. Yeah. So uh, anyway, we're going to harmonize our approach. It was it you that said this today? Somebody said this. I thought it was really smart. You know, normally we go about our thing, other countries go about their thing, and then we try to harmonize. With AI, we can harmonize from the get-go yeah. um, because we haven't yet, you know, written these regulations or rules or standards. So you have both mentioned China, so let's go there, uh, and we can circle back on other issues as time allows. Um, but, uh, you know, can one harmonize? Is one trying to harmonize toward China? Uh, so, Madam Commissioner, uh, on electric vehicles, it's become a major issue in DC as well as Brussels. Uh, the commission's launched an investigation into support Beijing's providing domestic manufacturers. Um, China's responded with a dumping probe, including French brandy, which uh, I've been to some 
parties where it seems to have been dumped, but in any case, <laughs> uh, so, so I, I'd, I'd love to, uh, are we at the start of a more contentious trading relationship um, uh, with China? And then how are the two of you looking at the, in the context of TTC, but also beyond, how are the two of, of you looking at this? Uh, you know, we've been tracking the rapid, rapid expansion of chi Chinese manufacturing, noticed lower cost producers increasingly look to export uh, and so also from your side, Madam Secretary, this is a, this is a big issue. So talk a little bit about this. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a very uh, big issue. So um, from, from Europe, when we look at China, we see a, a very complex relationship. Uh, we need China as a partner in fighting um, climate change. Without China on board, it will not happen. But China is also a systemic rival. <clears throat> In, in how they see uh, their uh, mode of, of governing versus our democracies. And they are an economic competitor. And in order to, to materialize that view, we have our strategy for economic security. And, and we just gave that uh, some muscle uh, last right. week to say we need member states to have you know, a toolbox for research organizations to do their due diligence uh, to know who they are actually dealing with. Uh, we have done that already for Horizon Europe, the big European uh, research program. We need everybody uh, to be able to do the screening of foreign direct investments. Uh, now 27, 22 European countries would do that. We need everybody to come on board. It's important. Uh, we need a, a European prison for export controls. Uh, each country has their own competences, but we need to have a European prison to look at that. And then we have taken the first steps to try to figure out how to prevent that some would circumvent export controls by outbound investment. And be very careful, because Europe is really open for business. So a lot of investment is coming in. Lots of investment is going out. So we want, of course, to be very precise. Uh, because the point of globalization is that we may calibrate it right now, but we still you know, really benefit from it. We have complex value and supply chains. Uh, so, so what we're doing now is to sort of de-risk our interdependencies. Uh, and of course, uh, Chinese uh, dependencies are, are one of those that we focus on. And this new economic security package, how does this uh, affect US-EU uh, dialogue? How, 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 what knock-on impact will it have on that? Well. <laughs> As a matter of principle, our, our package is, is country uh, neutral. But just to, to, to tell you about the differences, so for instance, uh, on quantum, it is on the list of uh, critical technologies uh, where you can be exempted or you can be uh, not allowed uh, mm. to participate in, in our research programs. While well, we were just talking about today, how can we do a memorandum of understanding on quantum to do some things together? Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's a very good illustration of, of the differences as to whom we will not work with yep. and with whom it is absolutely essential. And, and Madam Secretary, how does one manage this uh, China uh, issue across the Atlantic, particularly considering if you're looking at AI, you can set whatever you want to set, but if China goes in a totally different direction, then, then it's messy. Yeah, but AI in particular. AI knows no boundaries, mm. these models, freely travel across boundaries, et cetera, all the more reason to ha work with allies. And I think as it relates to China, Europe and the US, it's in each of our self-interest to work mm -hmm. together. Listen, we both, both of our, Europe and the United States have huge trading relationships with China, hundreds of billions of dollars, and that is a good thing. Selling goods to China uh, creates jobs in both yeah. of our countries. Having said that, there are real national security concerns uh, for both of us. Once again, we share values, and we have to be eyes wide open about that and work together to protect the people of our countries. Export controls is a perfect example. Mm. We worked in a trilateral relationship, uh, in that case with the Japanese and Europeans and the United States, to deny China the most sophisticated uh, semiconductor equipment. We need to move in that direction. Uh, electric vehicles. Electric vehicles we have to keep our eye on. The, the number of Chinese-made electric vehicles being sold in Europe today is vastly more than even a year or two years mm -hmm. ago. 
Why is that? What is really going on in China? How is the government subsidizing the whole ecosystem? That's a trade distortion. Separately, there's a national security distortion. Tesla is not allowed, you can't drive a Tesla on certain parts of Chinese roads, they say, for national security reasons. Well, sh think about yeah. that. What are the national security concerns? Forget about trade, okay? Forget about trade, forget about tariffs, forget about the economics of it. I'm just talking national security. Uh, we talked this mm -hmm. morning with Jim Farley, the CEO of Ford. A sophisticated EV and then an mm -hmm. autonomous vehicle is filled with thousands of um, uh, semiconductors and sensors. Mm -hmm. It collects a huge amount of information about the driver, the location of the vehicle, the surroundings of the vehicle. Do we want all that data going to Beijing? Yep. It's a question for you. So, and it's a question mm -hmm. for you. So I think that th that's just one example, EVs. We could ask the same questions about semiconductors, many of which are made in China. We had a session about that this morning. Same thing, US and European interest, economically, but even more important, national security, are really intertwined. And the way you do it, AI, chips, quantum, EVs, together. And, and on that score, where does your investigation right now stand of, of the subsidies for Chinese electric vehicles in, in, in Europe? When can we expect some findings from that? It's my colleague, uh, Valdis Dombrovsky, who's, who's heading it. Yeah. Uh, and I, I don't know what is the state of play of this investigation. Um, you raised something in the beginning, Madam Secretary, about elections, what came before, what could come after. Um, the, uh, this was suggested, uh, the EU first suggested this venue for discussions uh, in the summer of 2022, so 2020, late in the Trump administration. All the ministerials, however, have taken place, uh, uh, in, including you and also uh, EVP Dom Dombrovskis and Ambassador Tai have taken place during the Biden administration. Um, how are you and your respective administrations thinking about how to ensure that the format of TTC and the cooperation it's enabled continue? What, what can one do? We have elections on both sides of the uh, Atlantic. Uh, these things change. You know, so we, we talked about this today, and look, I think we have to be realistic, right? It's only so much you can put in cement. But I would, I would offer a couple of things. Number one, we have been, I think, very good at engaging stakeholders mm -hmm. in our work. So wholly apart from what we government folks do, I hope there's a demand from industry and civil society to keep the TTC going. At every uh, convening, we have robust stakeholder engagement. Mm -hmm. And I think they think it's been successful, and I think they're going to require the TTC to continue the work we've done. Separately, we decided today we're going to re-execute and renew all of the MOUs that we have. We have the um, uh, task force for future growth. We're going to re-up all of the members on that to continue the work. We have a robust agenda for our April meeting. So we're just going to put on paper the plans and, the, and execute the contracts that we have and just sort of assume that it will go forward. And, and no matter who will, who will be at the helm, uh, there are also things that we have learned. And, and we would also like to sort of put on paper what have we learned uh, over these uh, years, what should be done better in the next generation of the TTC. How can we make our precious uh, stakeholder uh, outreach more effective? Can we make it more strategic, and more focused? Uh, so, so try to also look back, not to you know, a pointed finger for the future, but just to say this was what we achieved. Now, uh, next iteration of the TTC, what can you learn from our experiences? And I think that's, that's a way of go about it instead of being prescriptive, then trying to enable people to, to sort of um, uh, get a sense of the experiences that we have uh, gained. Well, uh, the, uh, uh, our time has run out. 
there's many more questions we, I would like to ask you drilling deeper. I hope we can invite you back to the Atlantic Council at another time, perhaps at the next TTC, but if not before. But thank you so much, Madam Secretary and, and Madam Executive Vice You're President. Welcome. Thanks for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.